quick shout out to my regulars, Polyhead and Jason WFD. Thank you so much for being here, being the amazing mods that you are. So I have this time dedicated to an event that's held here in Kentucky every year called OMGCon, which this year they took online because of, you know, everything that's going on in the world. They asked me to devote 30 minutes of time to doing a speed run of TMNT Arcade, which it shouldn't take that long, but I don't mind, like, talking. I, the idea was that it was supposed to be a panel, so I was like, I guess I'm going to talk about myself a little bit and what got me into speed running. I really don't know. Um, I don't. I mean, that's kind of not the really stuff I reflect on anymore unless I get asked in, in like, interviews or podcasts or whatever. Oh, those breakdancing skills? Yeah, I can, I can go into that. Give me, give me one. Uh, no. Um, anyway, so um, for anyone tuning in from uh, OMGCon or who's uh, who stopped on over, uh, my name is Arox617 out of the 502 in Louisville, Kentucky. Hope everybody in Owensboro is doing awesome and all around KY. So I've been speedrunning for... Well, close to four years now. I think I started in August 2016 is when I started doing my first offline speedrun, so we're we're creeping up there. I don't speedrun as much these days, but it is what got me into streaming. And these days, I um, I primarily do arcade challenges, particularly those in the realm of high level one credit clears. So my goal with when I play most games is to make sure that I can beat the game on one credit. A lot of people tend to say, you know, it's like, oh well. Can you actually beat that on one credit? And I'm like, well, I can show you. <laughs> Maybe I will. So this is a game I've been running for about three years. TMNT Arcade, which a lot of people are familiar with. I've run into a number of other events as well. And for this game, there's two distinct categories. You have the any percent category, which involves credit feeding, which actually goes a lot faster. I think the difference between the top times is close to two minutes thereabouts minute and a half, two minutes. And the reason that's so, um, there's such a huge disparagement between the two or a huge difference between the two is that this game gets easier with the more deaths you take. But since we're trying to play it on one credit, I can only take a single death, which means that I'm abusing that death to make sure that I get the least number of enemies possible in given segments. Gives me a lot better idea of the memorization of a given segment. Now, even with that memorization, there's going to be a whole lot of randomness because this game is incredibly random. It's an arcade title from the 80s. They throw constant dice rolls at you. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause it real quick for those that want to hear that delightful music of Leo just walking to the right. So the level of play that I'm at, essentially the only character I really play is Donatello. He's absolutely the best due to his range. He has... Very clean boss fights compared to the other characters. And in general, he's just the best to have, especially in the end game. Oh, oh, Alright, we'll go ahead and pump in a quarter for Don and start at 3, 2, 1, go. Hey, what's up, Silver? Thank you so much. No miss, no less. So with Don, the first level's pretty short. We're going to be abusing a lot of this jump slash attack that you see. It's referred to as special, jump slash, whatever the heck you want to call it. A number of different names. You see, I hit that guy to make sure he was he stood still for an enemy grouping there. We're doing this attack because, because it just does the most damage of anything Dawn can do. It kills any foot soldier in one hit. So it's incredibly powerful. Really good against a number of other enemies as well. And it lets us combo on bosses. Speaking of bosses, here we have Rocksteady. We popping out of this module here. We have a combo we can do primarily on him, so I'm going to stay quiet for a moment. We'll see if I can pull it off. Very good. That's exactly how that's supposed to go. So good first stage. On the stage two, things do get a bit more fleshed out. A little bit longer than the previous stage was, though not by too much. The real big thing here is just making sure that we can maintain control of enemies and what they're doing, and making sure that we're not going to get walled by just random nonsense, like that dynamite that almost touched my foot. And really, the primary speed strat in this game, much like with most beat-em-ups, is just to make sure that enemies are just getting killed as soon as they pop into a given area. The whole point of playing games like this for speed is that you want to scroll the screen really, really quickly. I'm actually going to sit tight on this for a moment. 
Here's the one big one we have. Hey, KLM, thank you so much for the host. This is the one major speech strat in this game. This is a glitch that was brought to my attention a little bit over a year ago by a streamer named Josie Kandamu, which we named in her honor, called Josie Skip. Let's just warp past the entire building, skip about two or three waves of enemies. Gets us right to the boss with a glitch screen. Uh, that's not great. That's ah, unusual, but okay. Very unfortunate that happened. I'm gonna have to finish him off here, though. With that... Mmm, alright, I don't like this health. Normally it goes better than this, but I've made a few execution mistakes. Hey, what's up, Big Mike? Thank you so much for that, uh... Oh, permit. <laughs> nice one. So on to the sewer. First thing to designate about this stage, we don't get a health refill when we start the stage like we did with the previous one. So I'm actually going to be on good behavior here for a little bit. Oof. I've only got one health left, so I get for not getting the pizza in the previous stage. Gary Fire, thank you so much for the resub! Alright, this is actually going to be really scary. If one of those mousers grabs me, I am dead. And I don't want to take a death this early. I had to take a death soon, but I don't want it right now. That could have been bad. Thankfully, there is a pizza right there. Because I can kill these guys with the income. I'll wait this one out. Decided to kill that last one to be safe. Nice triple kill there. That's the kind of stuff you want in this game. For enemies to just go aggro on you, and then you just kill them all at once. It's phenomenal. Okay. Tag that guy, tag these guys. Sometimes these guys cooperate and spawn all at once. Not so much there. By the way, there's a wall jump in this game, it's worthless. Except for doing exactly what I just did there. It looks swag. Tag this guy real quick. He was being kind of a jerk. Nice triple kill. For Baxter here, we actually have a magic pixel we can stand on here. We just do repeated specials. So he ends up dying. Ah, I wasn't low, quite low enough. Uh, eh, that's fine. Need to come back. Supposed to be eight hits, which we did get in eight hits. I just was misaligned a little bit. KLM, I hope your stream went well. And what's up, Creeping Death? Since I'm um, since I'm being promoted for a local event here, I am primarily talking about the run I'm involved with right now. So I appreciate y'all being patient while I cease to not shut up or cease to shut up. How does that work? I didn't want that. I wanted to blow by the barrel. Whatever. Barrel does more damage. Heck yeah, locals. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen a lot of throw. Throw is really good. But unfortunately, it only works against foot soldiers. Killing right here. Now, that's where we take the death. I was hoping to take it earlier, but that barrel wasn't very cooperative. So it's not the worst. Attack that guy. Now, for those that haven't seen up to this segment, we actually have less enemies here. For every enemy we fought there, we'd be fighting two to three of the same enemy. For the Moron Twins, I'm going to go for a quick kill, which is really, really good if I can land it. Ah, a little bit off in the last cycle. It should be fine, though. The last two cycles are the hardest to get. There we go. Green Death is, in fact, a local. Barrel indention on the left. So we rescued April, and that's cool. Now we gotta go find Splinter, because he's been kidnapped too. Because that's how things work in the 80s. People got kidnapped, and you go rescue them. Use that car for abuse to be able to make sure they can hit their homies. That guy. Eh, let's go ahead and kill that guy. Wasn't quite so sure, because I didn't know how the positioning was going to work there. At least we're going to walk up right past and do this. Oh, I missed that. You have to catch it while airborne. Oh well. Bodies are easy to kill anyway. Uh, that was a little early. Fun though. Oh, that weight. Uh, I actually don't need the pizza here. Scroll up. Uh, you can kill as many as four that way, but I guess we didn't get that. Oh well. This stage, not really much to say about it. It's pretty standard. It's hard, but I did not mean to go to the right there. That was an input error for sure. Stop that. You're only embarrassing yourself. Swag tire hit. If you're just trying to 1cc this game, don't do that. <laughs> if that tire hits you, it does 5 damage, I think. 5 to 7. It's, uh, it's very painful. But, meh. 
So for this stage, and the, you can actually just scan the top left. Hey, Fog Doc, thank you for the good luck. You can just scan the top left and just chill out here on this pixel, and helicopters can't shoot you. But flat. What we're gonna do from here is we're gonna time scan the stage. Just kind of chilling out, let enemies spawn, don't interact with them. The reason we do this is this stage is on a timer. We can't end the stage prior to a given point. But if we, all we do is just haul off and just start killing enemies left and right, we'll just have to face more enemies. And who wants to do that? I'd rather keep things simple. Now that we have four enemies on screen, this is actually ideal. Because now they can't spawn anymore. This screen can only spawn four enemies at a time with the rank that we have, and it won't go any further. So really from here, all I'm looking for is just a, an audio cue. Heavens in the music. Which works for me, because this music's a total banger, so. Ba -da -ba -da. Ever did like the NES version of this track? Whee! But this one's real good. Da, 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 ba, 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 ba. So for the end of this music cycle, that's when we're gonna start teeing off on these enemies. They're not gonna have that much health left because I've been just peppering them with hits. Right around that percussion hit. And they zone me, unfortunately. We're fine though. No. We're fine. Things are fine. Jump into the van, only for the van to crash into the side of the highway. So I'm gonna let Mikey drive, what are you gonna do? Now our goal is to rescue Splinter, and we're at the final end game of that. I did not want that guy, ooh, that was bad. Getting grabbed is the worst. Like, you don't want that ever. Not only does grabbing drain your health, you can also be hit while you're grabbed. It's pretty bad. Kill these four guys. For speed, we actually have to kill these guys as they're incoming. I prefer not to if I'm just trying to play safe, but in this case, since we're going fast, gotta do it. I'm gonna let these guys jump up here though and just kill them as soon as they appear. Just gonna sure. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was gonna get there or not. Yuck, no laser. Okay. Throw this guy. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to take out these two guys. Go to the far right of the screen so I can take them both out immediately. Because if that orange guy gets loose with the fan, he becomes a real issue and I'd just rather not deal with it. Thank you, Soundwave, for the good luck. Have these drones pop out here. Swing and kill six of them. That's about the best I've ever done. That's pretty gnarly. I'm told you can get all seven at once, but I haven't actually seen it yet. It comes from a trustworthy source, but I have not actually seen it, unfortunately, so this foot soldier's being a troll. He needs to stop. He spawned a Rodney, though. That's great. We got half health going to the boss. I'm actually surprised this one is amazingly well as it did. This stage, for as short as it is, is real difficult. I'm gonna go and grab this now. So, Granitor is kind of the worst. He's pretty easy as long as you're just trying to beat him. All you have to do is just space out your hits. In fact, you can vertical scroll and just let him do this, and he'll never touch you. But this also isn't very fast, because Granitor is in complete control of his movement at all times. Sometimes he just stands there and looks around like a moron and does nothing. What you want is for him to come to you. And while he is selectively aggressive, even when he's aggressive, he's not very fast. So we kind of just have to make our own opportunities here by doing stuff like this. Juke and hit, juke and hit. I'm actually amazed I got away from that. I figured he would have anti heard that. It takes about 44 hits to take him down, I think. Generally, I lose track, though, just because I'm just making sure I can just get my hits in. Another wall jump. And we got Splinter. Prepare for the yellow screen of Doom. You, my so yellow. Alright, final stage. The Technodrome is kind of what it is. I honestly don't mind the Technodrome nearly as much as I mind the Factory. The factory for being as short as it is just has so many death traps, whereas the Technodrome, this is this right here at this laser is honestly the only part of the stage that I'm actually scared of. Reasons like that jump kick are part of it. A lot of knife guys here though, geez. That's fine. That's less fine. Mmm, that spacing's pretty good, game. I gotta give you that. Alright, so we're pretty low on health, but I'm not super worried because we can scam the rest of the enemies until the elevator pretty well. I did get trolled quite a bit there though. Uh, go away. These guys thankfully we can just ignore. Spear soldiers are some of the hardest enemies in the game. Jump these ice rays. 
So I'm going to have to deal with them. And we're on the elevator. At the bottom of this elevator, I don't recall if it's going to be two or three pizzas. In fact, I think it's actually not random, but predetermined by either A, how fast you're going, or B, how the rest of the stage has gone for you up to this point. Once I clear out two enemies from the very beginning, which I'm going to do by hogging the right, then I can have a snack, which is great. Snacks are good. So only two this time. Two is not great. I'm not particularly thrilled about that. Eh, that's fine. That Getting hit by that is definitely annoying, but it is... Um, it is breakable, it's a grab, so I'm not super worried about it. Grab kicks help us a lot here. I'm a bit more worried about the enemies that are going to be occurring before the boss. Right here. You know what I mean? Uh, I actually need to go ahead and grab this, and this is going to be really dangerous. Because... They can actually kill me at three. When they throw the spear like that, that does three damage. So if they decided to just do that, that would have killed my run immediately. It would at least kill the 1cc attempt. Gonna make things interesting now is I have to fight the first of three bosses without a healing item. Craig's very similar to how Granitor was. He's actually a bit easier because of how aggressive he is, and we can kind of kite him along to the left a little bit. Hopefully, he doesn't shoot a missile. That would be really bad. Eventually, I'm just gonna switch to uh, vertical scrolling. I pressed the button one too many times. Should still be fine though. I'm actually, gonna switch to this. This is a bit safer. gonna chase me. He, Drag doesn't skip leg day. Like, he will actually haul after you. Even though it definitely looks like he skips leg day. It looks like stumps. With boots. Okay. Solid fight. Made some mistakes and I had to go in pretty early on the healing, but we've got two fights left and the first one, if I do this well, I shouldn't be getting hit at all. So Krang is actually one of the more feared bosses in this game, but if you're gonna ask me, he really shouldn't be. If you're playing as Donatello, you can space Krang out super easily. It's not hard to get away from him at all. Just do the same juke movement I was doing on Granitor. Turn, turn back, hit. Wait out his iframes, and you can get this no problem. It's pretty rinse and repeat. Music's great though, so there's that to go on with. It is a long fight. I think Krang takes something like 56 hits to kill, so it's gonna take a moment, but it's still a total scam. Like, this is just a pure exploit, and it works essentially 100% of the time as long as you're willing to practice the timing. There we go. Alright, on to Shredder. I have a little bit less health here than I would like to have, but I can play this fight safely. Ah, they mixed it up. Uh, this is the fake one, I'm still pretty sure. Oh, he's doing a lot of ducking. Uh, that's bad. Uh, maybe that's the fake one. Nope, okay, I was right. Alright, so I need to go to the other side with this, or maybe they're going to troll me a little bit. Alright, so this is going to be a little bit scary. I'm a bit close quarters. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to jab to death. What I normally like to do is mix in a special for the third hit to get extra damage. But with my health being so low, Shredder actually can kill me by just one more touch. So what I'm going to do is just let him waltz in. We're going to hit him with some normals. And dodge the Mugen Beam as needed. So I'm going to keep this as safe as possible to ensure that I ensure my survival. Uh, no. Oops. Yeah. This is pretty much the whole fight. The reason we exposed the fake one so quickly is because by exploiting him to that side, he can, um, he doesn't have access to his Mutagen Beam, and he's just going to keep trying to walk at us, and he just essentially becomes a non-factor. It's a pretty neat little exploit. Essentially the reason I'm not doing special is because he has that crouch. If he goes under that and counterattacks me, there's a chance I'm dead. And I don't want that. I'd rather just keep hitting him. When you have to go into safety, it can take a while, but I lose the brakes sometimes. Mistakes have been made. Nobody's perfect. Oof. Where's this health coming from? Should be a beam, yeah, that's what I thought. He scanned a lot of time there. More ducking. I 
I don't remember taking this many hits. This is wild. But okay. I also haven't done it with like super reduced damage in a while. Oh my god. Three ducks. Four ducks in a row? <laughs> Just not having it today. Patience this out. Alright, so now that he's down for the count, we're just going to keep hitting him. Oof. Almost took it there. And that's going to clear it to the Technodrome, where that's going to be... Time. Oof, so much crouching. Sometimes the run comes down to that. When you get super low on health, you basically have no choice but to resort to, to safe strats if you want to maintain survival. It's... It's work, but it's worth it, I think. <clears throat> Thank you all ever so much for the GG's and for the ducks. <laughs> really appreciate the ducks. So yeah, that's um, that's Turtles Arcade, and for a while this was a primary fixture on my stream up until I ran it at AGDQ earlier this year, back in January. You know when people could still leave their house. Um, I think I had been playing this and maybe nothing but this, or it seemed like nothing but this for a good seven or eight months. I was, do I was grinding this out at least once a week just to make sure that all the nooks and crannies were taken care of, and I don't know. I, I really enjoyed my time with it. Even though it gets kind of stale to play the same character over and over again, learning the game with Donatello is where everybody should start and where they should probably finish. Now, if you want to do like a RAF run, by all means, RAF's, RAF's hard mode, so have at it. I also have 1cc'd this game with Leo, which was quite a bit harder, but I also enjoyed it. Leo's my favorite turtle, so it was super fun to do, and I really like doing it. Uh, trying to think of anything else I can say about this game. Um, I will go ahead and put my initials in. Well, the proper initials. Let's go with that. Shout out to OMG Con, who were kind enough to have me on board this year. I look forward to doing it in the future when I get to um, actually go. I wouldn't mind hanging out in Owensboro for a bit. Haven't been there in a long time. So, in regards to this game, I mean, the game's a classic. Ever, anybody who's ever been to an arcade, even as recently as like the early to mid-2010s, has probably seen this game. It's very, very common to see because... Back in the 80s and early 90s, pretty much every arcade had this from the, re from the release and forward. And yeah, there's also the 1-Up machine too, so if you ever find one at your local Walmart and you've got, a, got the cash to spend, bring it right home. I've been determining if I want to do that myself. Uh, some, lo some friends of mine in town got it, and I'm super jealous, so maybe I'll consider it. I just got to figure out if I have somewhere, somewhere to put it. But I like playing it this way too, it's easier to stream this way. Um, for those of you that enjoyed this, be sure to go ahead and drop a follow. Uh, right now, for arcade stuff, I'm currently in the grind of X-Men Arcade, doing US attempts on both the four-player and six-player versions. I've actually finished clearing the four-player version of the game with all characters as of, I think it was last Saturday is when I finished Cyclops, and he was the last one. And then I started on six-player runs. And that's been a grind in itself. I got the fourth character last night. I've got two left. So beyond that, who knows what's coming. I play a lot of Konami on my stream for Arcade. I've done a lot of time with The Simpsons. Put some time into a game called Metamorphic Force, which some of you, some of you may not be familiar with. Yair Kung Fu, which I very much enjoyed. Sunset Riders. And then from branching on out there, you've got Capcom games like The Punisher and Irem games like Vigilante. So yeah. Those of you tuning in from OMGCon, and of course to my regulars as well as... KLM and his awesome host. Thank you so much. And I think that's going to be me signing off from OMGCon. You all have a great rest of your night.